Hey there, in this one, we're gonna be installing Python on our Windows 10 computer. Now we're gonna be using the guide that we have on our blog. A quick shortcut is to this URL right here. And basically what we're gonna be doing in this guide is installing the Python programming language version 3.6 on your Windows 10 computer. Now, if you have an older version of Windows, no worries, in this guide, there is a way to install that as well. So, check out the bottom of the guide for that installation process. Um, because basically, if you don't have Windows PowerShell on your computer, you're gonna use something called Command Prompt instead. And the guide near the bottom actually handles some of that installation, although, you might wanna follow along with us at least for a little while because what we're about to do should also work on your system even if it's possibly even if it's as old as Windows XP, 7, 8, and probably now 10. Okay, so first things first, we have to download Python. So let's go ahead and open up the Python program or python.org slash downloads and we're gonna get the latest version of 3.6. So yours might say 3.6.4 download whatever that version is. But you're not gonna just jump in and hit download. Instead, you're gonna click the Python version uh, 3.6 and then scroll down to files. Now here, we actually want to download the version for our computer. I think the x686-64 in executable installer should work on both versions. Um, that is possible. If you do know, please let us know in the comments but we wanna make sure that we get the right one for our system. So if you are not sure what you have, you are just gonna simply, like we say in this guide, we're gonna look for in Cortana or this little search here, we're just gonna look for system information. This is one of a few different ways on how to get this. And then this big system information box comes up and what I'll see is under system type, I see it's X64 base. PC. So that means that I have a 64-bit machine right there. That's what that means. Um, so we're going to go ahead and download that version. I don't need to leave that system information open anymore, so I'm gonna just going to shut it out. So I'm just going to click and download this executable installer. Now, I'm actually not going to do it because I've already downloaded it for this video, right? So it's already in my downloads. There it is right there. So go ahead and pause it. it because you definitely want to have it all downloaded before you actually continue on. So I'm going to assume that you've downloaded everything and now we're going to go ahead and open up the Python installer. So just double click this and instead of jumping into just install now, we actually want to customize the installation. I'll explain why in a moment, but we're definitely also going to want to add Python 3.6 to the path. If I click on customize, one of those things that I'm customizing is I'm ensuring that pip is installed on my system, right? I wanna make sure that pip's there. Pip is a Python package installer. So it allows you to install things like Django or Python requests or beautiful soup, a bunch of other things that really help make Python the valuable thing that it is today. Of course, pip is not the only way that you can do that, but it makes it very, very easy. But for us, it's gonna allow us to install Django and more importantly, our virtual environment, which is something we'll do in just a little bit. So go ahead and click next after you have those things installed. Um, and I'm gonna get rid of that zoom. And then for here, we're gonna install for all users. Notice the actual library location changes. I also wanna make sure that Python is in environment variables. Make sure all of those are ticked. The bottom two is not as important but definitely install for all users and for Python environment variables. No, of course, you don't have to install it for all users. That's completely up to you. But the environment variables, that is a must. In fact, if you followed either our older guide or if you follow the bottom of this guide, it, it actually sets up the environment variables for you. Like we manually set them up in that older guide. So we're not going to do that here. Instead, we're going to just allow Python to do it for us. The next thing is, I'm gonna take this out of program files. I'm gonna keep it just right in the C root. Um, I, I like having it there. And also I believe that the old version of Python being installed, that's where it went by default. 
Again, I like having it there so I know exactly where it is all the time. Of course, in program files, it's not that big of a deal, but if you didn't install it for all users, I would still say put it here so you still know for sure where it is. I'm gonna go ahead and hit install now. It's gonna, of course, ask me to make sure that this is okay to install. Yes, of course, you 100% wanna do that. So while that's installing, I'm actually gonna scroll back up. Um, we've got all of these things done, right? So if you're not sure about what all those that we ticked, make sure you just go through that step two. Um, the next thing is we want to verify that Python is installed in Windows PowerShell. So I'm going to go ahead and wait for this to actually install. Um, but in the meantime, I'm actually going to jump one step ahead um, while that's installing to do update PowerShell settings. Now, one of the things that we want to be able to do is run scripts inside of our PowerShell. That is, I want to be able to activate my virtual environment. That's one of those things. I'll point out that script when we get there, but we have to actually do this at least one time. We have to set this up to make sure our PowerShell actually works. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to search for Windows PowerShell, and then I'm going to right click on it and click run as administrator. Um, it's going to ask for a security thing, of course, say yes, and then this is what opens up. Notice it's in Windows System 32. That That is what we want in particular. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this execution policy that we have, and it's really just set execution policy as unrestricted. So let's make sure I copied it. And the nice thing with PowerShell, I can just right click and then there it goes in. I press enter. And then I'm going to say yes or Y to all things. Hit enter after that. And now I have PowerShell set up in the way that I need to make sure my scripts run. Okay, let's see how we're doing with Python. Python setup was successful. I'm going to close that out. Another quick shortcut to PowerShell, which you might use in the future not to update PowerShell settings or what we just did. But now going forward, if you hit the Windows key and X at the same time, you get this menu item. Instead of just the Windows key, the start menu doesn't pop up. Instead, it's all this stuff. This works for all kinds of versions for Windows. So this time we're just gonna do Windows PowerShell, not the admin version, but just the PowerShell. Go ahead and hit that. This opens up our Windows PowerShell. So let's go ahead and verify that Python was installed by typing out Python-V. And notice it's a capital V. I press enter. What do you know? Python's there. If I do pip, it will give me a bunch of stuff. As in, it doesn't give me an error. So like if I did ABC, that gives me an error. That is the error that you would see if you didn't install this correctly. Either one of those things. And if that's the case, if you didn't, just open this back up, uninstall it, and try it again. It should work just fine. If you have issues and different sort of errors that that are different than, let's say, this, please let us know in the comments below so we can possibly help you or somebody else could help answer that question too and if you are one of those people that have an error and you find the answer let us know in the comments because it helps everybody trust me on that one okay so we got all this stuff installed we've set up powershell to actually work now what we need to do is create something called a virtual environment now these things are important because of versions so if i scroll down a little bit and run something called pip freeze this shows me that I have virtual ENV installed. You might not have that installed yet, right? There's a good chance that you don't. You might not see anything here. But what PIP allows me to do is I can install something like Python requests. I hit enter. This installs the Python request library. As you see, it's also installing other requirements related to Python requests. Now, this is something that's fairly important because if I do PIP freeze now, I see that I've got a bunch of things installed here. Right now, if I used a different version of Python requests in one of my projects, like what if I used version 1.10 or something like that, and I wasn't ready to upgrade to the new version? Well, that potentially creates an issue because if I have a new project that needs this new version, what do I do? That's what virtual environments are for. It's about keeping your dependencies and requirements for a project nice in one little spot. Now, you could go one step further and put it in an entire container, something like, uh, like what Docker does. 
that is Docker, you could put it in an entire con container where it's in its in completely entire virtual and or entire environment itself. But we don't want to go that far. That's getting that's getting way more advanced than we really need at this point. So we use virtual environments to keep all of our project data right in one place so we don't have any issues. The other part of this means that if we want to learn from older versions of Python projects, we can actually use virtual environments to do that as well. So where do we store virtual environments? Now, if you've watched my old Ver Windows series setup, nothing wrong with how it was set up there and what we did. All of those things still work to this day. The things that I want to change is generally how I store things, like where I actually store them and what I like to do with those things. So I actually like to put it in a new folder called dev. So if I list things out in here with just ls, I see that I've got all of this stuff, right? So you might not have everything here, but you'll definitely have desktop and documents, right? So I'm in my users directory. Another place, another way to get there is to just do that. So that command right there will, will definitely get you right where we are right now. And of course, that assumes that you're using the standard PowerShell and we list things out or DIR, it'll show me all of those things. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna do is make dir mkdir dev, and then I'll cd into dev. If I list things out, I see that there's nothing in there. If I do pwd, I see exactly where I am. Notice that I am using slashes differently. PowerShell is one of those newer things for Windows that is actually really cool for stuff like this. So it's, it is a little bit more like the Unix bash. That is, it looks a little bit more like Linux and Mac, which is cool because that means it's uniform for all of us. Okay, so now that I've got this, I've got a dev folder. I'm going to make another directory. So I'm going to call this CFE home. And this is where I'm going to put my virtual environment. So I'm going to CD into CFE home. And inside of here, I'm going to go virtual env period. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and allow that to install for a second as we discuss some stuff. So all I'm doing is step seven right here. And I have all of these things installed. Again, if you don't have virtual environment installed, sorry, I think I jumped that. Um, you're going to do pip install virtual env just like that. Because if you get an error here, uh, you know, that's what you'll end up doing. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to keep one folder per virtual environment. In my case, I actually have one virtual environment for every single web application or project that I do. Um, is this the most efficient way to do it? Maybe not. It is it the most effective for the way I work? Absolutely. So you're going to have to figure out a way for you to do it in, in, in of itself, like how you're going to want to work in these environments. So for example, the codingforentrepreneurs.com website, that has its own virtual environment. For our cur.co website, that has its own virtual environment. The requirements might be very similar, but they're not the same. They're rarely ever the same. So I create an entire folder for that entire project. So in this case, the CFE home project is the virtual environment. So I'm actually going to name Django roughly the same. Okay, so if it hangs a little bit, just press enter and usually it finishes. Okay, so now I've got this virtual environment installed. And if I list things out, I see that I've got include lib and scripts. Lib and scripts are the important things here for us to understand or at least to note that it's there. It is different than Mac and Linux. Mac and Linux have the same. Windows has this. Um, so what we want to do is activate this virtual environment. Now, remember how I did this update PowerShell settings part and I said, oh, well, we need to run scripts. Well, that's what activating the virtual environment does. We actually run a script and the script is dot slash scripts slash activate. Press enter. That activates the virtual environment. Notice the direction that I did the slash slashes. You can do either direction, forward slash or backslash. Either way, doesn't matter. It will activate. So if I do deactivate to deactivate the virtual environment, activate it again. We got scripts activate. I hit enter. There it is. Okay. So if I scroll up a little bit, I'm going to look at what I did when I said pip freeze. Here's that command, pip, pip freeze. 
And that gave me these different libraries, right? It showed me what I have installed with Python. So if I scroll down to my virtual environment and do pip freeze, what am I gonna see? I'll hit enter. I see nothing. That's because nothing's installed on this virtual environment. That is an important and critical step to this. This is the understanding that hopefully you got. If you don't understand that, definitely rewind it a little bit so you can get a, a better understanding of how all of that stuff works or let us know in the questions below. I think I've really covered it a lot. So I, I, I'm going to assume that you know it pretty well. Okay, so now that we have our virtual environment activated, we want to make sure it's activated and that's denoted by this right here. So the parentheses with the name of the virtual environment in there, that means it's activated and then it shows us our path. So um, that is our virtual environment. Now I can do pip install Django equals equals to 1.11.5, for example, and hit enter. I'm going to let that install for just a moment. Um, mine's using a cached version of Django. Yours will not, if, unless you've already installed Django, of course, um, or, or specifically that version of Django. So this is allowing me to install, and you can change these versions for any Python package. All of them have versions, so you can you can play around with the version number here. But usually, what I'd say is whatever the tutorial or guide says or video says, go off of that version. Right, like if we were going forward to create a Django project in this series, which we're not, we're going to do a very basic one, but we're not going to build a real project here. This is all about getting our system set up. But if we were going to build a real project, you don't want to divert from this version. That is a rule of thumb that I highly, highly recommend you, you stick with. Okay, so we have it installed. Awesome work. If you liked our guide, please consider sharing it with a friend that is also learning Python. I don't want you to just spam everybody. That that does not make sense. Um, but if they're also learning Python and they want to get it set up on their Windows computer, let, let uh, please share this guide with them or share the Mac or Linux installation because we have that as well. But we aren't done on the video. The guide might be done, but the video, we are not. We can actually do some more stuff in the video just so you can see how things are handled. Now, if I go back into the PowerShell, it's doing the installation process um, and it's there, right? So if I do pip freeze now, I've got Django installed. So I'm gonna do this all over again, but with a new virtual environment and install Django. Okay, and I'm gonna do it in a different way, but it will still have the same effect. So Windows X, I'm gonna open up a new PowerShell. I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize this old one. Now again, where are we going for our development folder? We did CD and then dev slash dev. And then I'm gonna do make dir. And in this case, I'm gonna just say win um, venv. And then we'll change into win venv. We list everything out. There's nothing in there. I do virtual env period. I will say one thing is sometimes you'll see dash p and then Python three. That is just saying if you have two different versions of Python installed, you want to declare which version you're going to use. In this case, we only have one version installed, so we're going to stick with just dot period. I'm going to let that install real quick. Okay, so virtual environment installed, finished. Now what do we have to do? Yeah, that's right. We have to activate it. Scripts slash activate. Cool. Now let's go ahead and install Django. I press enter. And it's really bringing me back to where I was with that other PowerShell, right? So now I've got that other PowerShell installing. Notice that I actually didn't give a version, so it gets the latest and greatest version. That's not always recommended unless the latest version is what's related to the video, as I've said a few times. Okay, so now we're going to actually set up our project. So... We use something called Sublime Text. Sublime Text is a code editor, a text editor, if you will, to actually handle the installation process, or excuse me, the writing process of all of our code. So everything that we write in Python, we're going to do here. Much like if you were going to open up a Word document and write out a document, you would use Word. When you want to use code, you use something called a code editor or a text editor for code. Um, and... Sublime Text is one of those things that you can use. Now, this is not free, but I really recommend using this because it's really 
awesome and useful. It's a very good program. I don't have any affiliation with them, although I'd like one. I don't have one. And yeah, you can download and use the entire full version for free regardless. It's something else that's really, really cool about it. It just nags you to upgrade. So anyways, I'm going to open up my version of Sublime Text here. And I'm going to add this folder in here as a example of creating our project. So let's go ahead and just go project and we'll say add folder to project. And then I'm going to navigate to the project that I just created or the virtual environment that I just created. It's in C drive users, J as in my user, dev, CFE home, select folder. Okay, great. And now it's showing that folder on the side there. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this project as, and I want to go into where that project was as well and just keep it all in one place. I love keeping it in one place. If you haven't noticed CFE home, we save that in there. Okay, great. So now we can actually reopen this. Now, if I was going to make a Django project here, I would go back into PowerShell and I would list things out, make sure I'm in the root of my virtual environment, you know, where scripts and lib are. And I'm going to make a new directory, make dir called SRC. And then I'm going to change into SRC. Ho hopefully something you noticed is this folder was created and shows up on Sublime Text. That's fairly important. And now what I'm going to do is just do django-admin.py start project CFE home and then period. I hit enter and it opens up Sublime Text. In your case, it may or may not open up Sublime Text. So this happened because of how I have my Python files currently working. So yours may or may not do this. If I go back into my project here, I'm going to just jump in to local disk, users, J, dev, CFE home, and then um, I'm going to go into source, or sorry, not source, but scripts, and we've got Django admin here. I'm going to re, basically the, the one below it is a Python file, it says .py or py file. I'm going to go into properties here, and I'm actually going to change this back to opening up with Python. We'll say okay. And I actually want to change that one in particular with Python. I changed it. Do that again. Django admin.py start project CFE home period. And there we go. Okay. So now I actually have my project in here. You probably didn't have to do that second step, but if you ever want Python files opening in sublime text, you have to do what I just did. So if I go into that project again, so dev CFE home into source and I want to open something like that it's going to change as to where I open it with so I can edit it or I can go to open with and then choose another app and then do sublime text and there now it actually opens that so the reason I put it in the project itself is so when you open these files they open automatically they don't just try and run as a python file it's it's one of the things that happens pretty much only on Windows as far as I know. So now we have our Django project. We can actually just go ahead and run in here, python manage.py, run server. There we go. So this is a emulated development server. I can copy this URL here. So let's just copy it. And actually I'm gonna press up and enter one more time because control C actually turns off the server too. So keep that in mind. So now I'm going to go ahead and paste in that URL. Boom. You now have Django installed and it's working and it's ready to actually start an actual project. So before I go away though, um, I want you to go back and do everything that I just did. So that is, um, controlling C to break out of the virtual environment. All right. So the, the running server, I'm going to go back, type out deactivate to deactivate this. And then I'm going to go back to my dev folder and I want to remove these directories. I believe it's remove rmdir CFE home and we'll say yes to everything. And I'm going to remove dir win vnv and again, yes to everything. Uh, it looks like I got some issues there. Remove dir win vnv 
and we'll just say a and I'm getting some permission denied error um, that that's that's fine but basically I'll just delete it here shift delete uh, it's probably because it's in use that is exactly what it is so let's close that out and that was a problem okay so now I'm gonna leave it off with you guys having the ability to do this on your own I want to challenge you to do it on your own and you can actually follow along with our create a blank Django project guide in addition to this Windows installation to actually create a like a good practice for a Django project to get Django started um, if that's where you're going to go next. If not, definitely consider checking out our 30 days of Python. That uses Python version 3.6 and it's going to help you understand Python just a little bit better. Now, we have a lot of projects in here as you see. So 30 days of Python is one of those projects that will, will, will give you a lot of the basics of Python and get you going to a point where you'll have a better understanding of how to do web scraping, um, also working with APIs and all sorts of things that Python has to promise as, as a foundation to move forward. Like if you're not ready for Django quite yet, 30 days of Python is a really good place to start. If you are ready for Django, you can check out our latest version of Try Django. The Try Django series is always about the basics of Django itself. So consider Try Django 1.11, or you can go backwards in versions too because um, they are still very much Django. So, so yeah, the versions changed, but a lot of the things about them are pretty much the same. And then finally, there is on our YouTube channel, joincfe.com slash YouTube that will redirect you to our YouTube channel. Um, so you can actually see a lot of the Try Django series here. There's a lot of it there. And there's there's some Python stuff as well, like web scraping on there as well. So you can use this as a resource to get some of that free understanding um, behind Django and Python, as well as some other things like Angular and some JavaScript stuff too. But please consider subscribing for that if you want to see more content just like this. I realized we went through a lot of stuff in this one and we went fairly quickly and it was a little bit long of a duration, but the point of this was really to just have you working off of that guide. I mean, that guide is really gonna be the thing that you'll probably end up using. You'll probably pause the video, maybe even stop watching the video and just go off of the guide. There's nothing wrong with that at all, but I just wanted to give you this extra context in a video form so you have a hopefully just feel better about installing python on your local system because this guide itself i mean it's yeah there's probably a, another guide out there that that talks about this exact same thing so the guide itself is not the important part it's actually understanding all the context that goes into this and that's why i really made this video in addition to this installation process so thanks so much for watching. My name's Justin Mitchell. I am the founder of codingfrenchpreneurs.com and I absolutely love coding in Python and building web applications with Django. These things are have been very important parts of my life for the last five years and they will be for many, many years to come because of artificial intelligence and all the things that I'm really excited about that I'm just not quite ready to share courses on. Thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Please say hi. I would love to hear from you guys. Tell me where you're from, what you're trying to work on, whether it's on the guide itself or on our YouTube channel. Um, I get a lot from you guys, especially if you ask questions. I actually learn a lot from the questions. I probably learn more from the questions that you guys ask and have, and have asked than the things that I research on my own because I don't know the things that I don't know. I don't know the questions that you might be asking that really, that, I mean, that those are the things that I really encourage you to ask um, because as a beginner, you might ask questions that you think aren't that great of questions, but they might be subtle enough that they're actually such great questions because they come up over and over and over again. And that's how I'm able to improve videos and improve guides 
and help you guys more, help everybody more. So please don't hesitate to ask a bunch of questions if you want. I mean, we also try to make it easy to find a bunch of answers in our videos. So sometimes the questions might be rely in a video and that's where if you're like, oh, well, how do I install Django or how do I get Django started? Well, that's where you take a whole series like Try Django uh, there. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and I look forward to chatting with you more in the future.